So good morning, everyone. Today we'll be discussing uh, the two acts existence in Karnataka for the purpose of maintenance of common area. So the two acts are Karnataka Apartment Ownership Act 1972, Karnataka Cooperative Societies Act 1959. Today we'll be discussing about the flaws of Karnataka Apartment Ownership Act 1972 and the recent developments with regard to Karnataka Cooperative Society Act 1959. <clears throat> so initially, we'll have to look into the history when this practice for forming associations under 1972 has to be looked into. We may trace it back to 10 years past. So uh, there was no procedure defined as such for registration under the Act per se. So in one of the sections in uh, 1972 Act, it says that deed of declaration and bylaws should be filed before competent authority. Uh, in this uh, act, there was no registration procedure mentioned. The only procedure available to be recognized as an association was uh, a filing procedure, which says that deed of declaration and bylaws should be filed before competent authority. Now, let's understand what is the purpose of deed of declaration. What is this document? So this document is generally a public document wherein the builder goes before a sub-registrar revenue authority. He registers this document to declare. So the purpose of this document is only to declare all the land area, all the apartments constructed or the villas constructed, all the common amenities provided, all the uh, lift staircases, all other extra amenities provided. So this is the only purpose of this document. Now, the builder found a flaw in this act. So when it says DOD and bylaws, what the builder did was he started inserting the bylaws of the association for common area maintenance into this document called deed of declaration. Now, he goes before the sub-registrar who is a revenue authority. Uh, so he registers this entire document by paying the fees for registration is rupees 1000. And for additional pages, he uh, pays around 13 rupees or six, six rupees for scanning fees. This, so this is all the fees he pays to register this document. Now, uh, now coming to the uh, fun part, wherein he has to file before the competent authority under 1972 Act. So the competent authority under 1972 Act is Registrar of Cooperative Societies. If the builder takes physical document of uh, DOD and bylaws before the competent authority, the competent authority refuses to accept any physical filing of DOD and bylaws. So now builder, how he started to make a fool of all residents is by sending it through post, RPAD, Registered Post with Acknowledgement Due. So when he receives, he sends the copy of DOD and uh, inserted with bylaws before the sub-registrar authority, so, uh, sorry, before the registrar of cooperative societies. Once he receives the postal acknowledgement, he will show you the proof that he has filed before the competent authority. In fact, uh, there is no file. Uh, in, in fact, when the competent author authority himself is refusing to accept any 1972 Act, the reason he has given is many times uh, no powers are conferred upon him to accept any such filing. We have filed many RTI replies. We have asked him whether do you have any powers to register apartment associations under provisions of Karnataka Apartment Ownership Act 1972. Uh, he has replied, no powers have been conferred upon him to register apartment associations under Karnataka Apartment Ownership Act 1972. So till date, our state government has not made any efforts to define the jurisdiction, to define the power, to define the duties of the competent authority that is registrar of cooperative societies. So, so the builder has found the flaw in this act 1972 after uh, 
i will uh, like to show the few of the replies given by the registrar of cooperative society so in one of the replies uh, it's in canada uh, we asked them do you have powers to register association as per provisions of 1972 act he has replied us no powers are conferred upon us to register apartment associations under 1972 so in the in one of the second reply when we asked in uh, 20 uh, 21 as an appeal so he has replied that instead of 1972 act we can register as a cooperative society under karnataka cooperative societies act 1959 and uh, this scheme of registering uh, as a cooperative society please note that it started only in 2020 act even though uh, people say that uh, it is 1959 act uh, why it is 2020 the scheme the notification was announced only in the year 2020 the so registration of cooperative societies started only in the year 2020 uh, our state government followed the maharashtra model bylaws and they are allowing only those set of bylaws to be registered for formation of cooperative society you cannot Uh, formulate your own bylaws or your own rules and regulations to be registered so we have to follow only the bylaws prepared by the um, uh, the maharashtra model bylaws only such bylaws are allowed to be registered so far so recently a question was raised recently recently a question was raised recently a question was raised whether associations can be registered uh, under 1972 act so uh, it was uh, the question was raised in the parliament mm -hmm. and uh, because the, the same question was forwarded to legal department and legal department has also answered the question mm -hmm. and in the same reply the mm -hmm. registrar of cooperative societies in the second page of the reply so he uh, they have replied that uh, for uh, there are three types of association like cooperative society under 1959 society under ksr in 1960 association under 1972 act so under these circumstances the uh, promoter can take steps to formation of a cooperative society or as a company so nobody has registered any company so far to maintain the common areas so the only practice being followed in karnataka is cooperative society so i would also like to show the legal reply but i have not got the full legal reply so under uh, uh, under 1972 act the 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 question which was forwarded in the assembly uh, the same question was answered uh, by the legal department i i have only got it of uh, one page of the document but i cannot uh, uh, provide the authenticity of this document so in this reply given by the legal department so uh, they have replied under uh, the karnataka apartment ownership act kalam mattu ee parishilisilaitu association rachane karya vaikari mattu hakku badhyategala bagge matra ullekisirutade the karnataka societies registration act 1960 and ko 1972 act under these acts ಎಲ್ಲಿಯೂ ಸಹ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ನೋಂದಣಿ ಆಗುವ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಉಲ್ಲೇಖವಿರುವುದಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂಡರ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ನೋ ವೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಶನ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಆದುದರಿಂದ ಆದುದರಿಂದ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಅನ್ನು ನೋಂದಣಿ ಮಾಡಲು ಸದರಿ ಕಾಯ್ದೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅವಕಾಶವಿರುವುದಿಲ್ಲವೆಂಬುದು ಕಾನೂನು ಇಲಾಖೆಯ ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯವಾಗಿರುತ್ತದೆ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಅಬೌ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ Uh, there is no provisions to register associations under the above acts mm -hmm. and this is the opinion of the legal department so this is the reply given by the legal department in the reply towards the question raised before the karnataka state legislative assembly so now it is clear that 1972 is like a toothless tiger so uh, what is the next best option we can all follow is karnataka cooperative societies act so i would like to discuss about the features of 1959 the bylaws features the term of any elected body will be for 5 years so the member required for office bearers is 13 members 9 will be general 
uh, four will be SCST OBC and uh, outs uh, in uh, thirteen member team they should there is a women's reservation for two posts. So elections will be conducted by returning officer. Uh, if it is more than uh, so, yeah, I will take questions in the end. First, I will explain. Yeah. So election is conducted by the returning officer. Minimum deposit of two lakh what share amount deposit to be made before district cooperative bank what is the time required time required is three to four months procedure of formation of 1959 act so initially 20 promoters are required many have a confusion that promoter is, means a builder but in fact promoter is not a builder promoter are generally the apartment residents uh, uh, who have purchased the flats who are proposing to form the cooperative society under KCSA 1959 Act. So 19 promote, uh, 20 people are required, 19 people will be termed as promoter, one person will be called as chief promoter. Their role is to uh, propose to form cooperative society and they are required to sign several documents. They are required to file affidavits, uh, application signed by laws and performance before the registrar. Once this uh, signed documents are submitted, a case worker will be appointed. A case worker visits your place. He prepares a feasibility report, whether can a, a cooperative society can form or it cannot be formed. He prepares a feasibility report. He submits it before the registrar. Registrar, after verifying feasibility report, he gives one order to collect share amount from all members and deposit in district cooperative bank. So each share, a uh, person is liable to pay is 1200 rupees 1000 rupees share amount value 100 rupees application fee 100 rupees registration fee so every member required to fill in application for membership providing personal details of caste application for of all members and pro after once he gives the order we have to uh, submit application of all members pro forma affidavits by chief promoter and uh, another two three applications has to be submitted and uh, we also need to deposit uh, deposit uh, minimum 2 lakh rupees uh, share in the district cooperative bank or more uh, depending upon the number of members uh, submitting for KCSA 1959. So once we submit all these details, once we submit all these details, they will issue registration certificate and bylaws. So once they issue registration certificate and bylaws the next step is election process the calendar of events is published returning officer will visit at least minimum five times so in the first date in the calendar of events he will uh, call for nominations all nominations are received along with their if anybody is claiming uh, benefit for uh, caste reservation they need to produce caste certificate issued by Karnataka state government. They cannot issue caste certificate issued by another state government. So uh, on the second date, the, again, the returning officer visits to check if there is any withdrawal of nominations. If minimum 13 people uh, fill in the quota required for the uh, MC body or management committee, then they will be declared unopposed. They will be elected unopposed. If more than 13 people uh, fill in the applications, then uh, elections will be held. So on third date of calendar of events, the elections are conducted and uh, uh, the election the returning officer prepares five to six election ballots suppose there are uh, seven uh, seven uh, men contest there are nine men contesting for general category so you need to elect seven people there will be one ballot for general category man one ballot if there are four women contesting for two posts there will be one ballot for uh, women likewise SCST OBC uh, if those people uh, have filed nomination and there is no opposition, they will be elected on the post. So only uh, those categories who have uh, large in number and filing nominations, only for them, elections will be conducted. For remaining people, if there are no other participants or contestants in that category wise, then they will be elected on the post. So on that, on that election date, election is... Uh, 
conducted and after on the same date the election results may be announced or on a, another date election results may be announced and again on the sixth fifth or sixth date the election the returning officer again visits to uh, to conduct internal elections for the posts of president treasurer vice president so again uh, in, uh, inside the election will be uh, process conducted within the elected the 13 member team so this is the end of uh, process for formation of cooperative society this takes almost this takes almost uh, uh, 3 to 4 months time so i have registered so far around uh, some five cooperative societies uh, in devanagari some four cooperative societies in hospote one, one of them in bangalore i have started one process of registering cooperative society so the next trend so uh, the 1972 if you ask my opinion what is my opinion about 1972 yes there are several pils pending before high court uh, if if the legal department's reply is accepted before the high courts then all 1972 associations will go for a toss so if you ask me whether uh, can we be in 1972 act till that time the act gets scrapped yes you can uh yes you can till that time because uh, you, you, for purposes like uh, the three questions are unanswered under uh, 1972 the three questions are interpretation of bylaws uh, because the bylaws are not defined under 1972 act it is cut copied and pasted from here and there and uh, pasted in the uh, bylaw section and uh, people are made to follow that generally uh, the Sir, one query is there yes. so you, you you are you have said the entire process for election point of view under k uh, kcsa 1959 can you also share the information related to the k 1972 also what is the election process see generally it is self regulated under the bylaws so builder cuts uh, uh, hit generally the issue with 1972 associations is your bylaws are brought no, no, no. in here. we are not talking about the issues we are not talking the issues what are the process for that see issues are there in 1972 also let all me our uh, uh, ipc has that uh, all the issues hmm. so okay please go ahead then i'll ask there is no process defined under 1972 act for uh, conducting election process first of all so election is just borrowed from here and there from the different bylaws by the builder election is self regulated conducted by the owners uh, so generally one month notice period is followed as a practice but there is no law defining how to conduct elections under 1972 act so far because the act was enacted in the year 1972 but our state Uh, lawmakers did not define uh, rules regulations duties how to run an association because our apartment culture uh, in karnataka started only in the year 2000 before 2000 apartments many apartments did not exist they were following 1960 welfare association so our uh, lawmakers did not provide sufficient rules and regulations or uh, did an addendum to the act to improve the working of the act so in my opinion 1972 till date uh, is a defunct act but in but still it can be it's a choice of your residents majority whether you want to follow you can follow till the time it gets scrapped but if it is getting scrapped what is the next better act you need to follow is only cooperative society act because in 2020 registrar of cooperative societies who are uh, who are also state government authority have passed the notification for maintenance of common areas now you can register as a cooperative society so i am not here giving you an uh, uh, decision that you need to follow 1959 or only 1972 act it's your collective choice of residents which act you want to follow 90, whether 90, you want to follow 1972 yes go ahead till the time that uh, court decides or uh, any other uh, in future if all these loopholes of 1972 act are questioned and the act gets scrapped Uh, good possibility or another option if the high court uh, because high court uh, jurisdiction they cannot amend that 
they cannot quash the act they can only direct the state government to do such action it is a discretionary power of the state government the state government can either quash the act or ask all people to shift to 1959 one of first option the state government can also amend the provisions of 1972 act and make better provisions under 1972 act giving proper powers and uh, recognition to the competent authority under 1972 this way 1972 will have more eighth compared to 1959 act yes uh, bipin sir you can ask me yeah so uh, sir i was just going through that uh, you have given entire process related to the co cooperative society but as uh, as per my understanding when i interacted with some of the lawyer it is not that paid it is not that just general interaction mm -hmm. most of the lawyer says that uh, latest rule is always better than the old rule and ko 1972 is better yes some some gap is there which uh, the government of karnataka is working on that so mm -hmm. like that you have given the process about that uh, uh, for your 1952 that looks like that you have given the bias uh, decision that can you also give that uh, same requirement like what is election process for 1972 what kind of the documents are required right all those things see sir i am legal advisor for almost 14 uh, resident welfare associations some uh, seven are under uh, <clears throat> 1972 here the process we generally follow is uh, i request everybody to pause uh, mute yourself here yeah. <clears throat> so here the process generally followed is uh, so when the in in the first uh, agm uh, all residents are called for a annual general meeting so they in the annual general meeting the dates for elections nominations withdrawal of applications are decided calendar of events are published so one month notice period is given so after that uh, all the nominations are received then withdrawal accepted and it is a suo moto self conducted by the residents no government official or returning officer are involved in this involved in this so it is self so motor process, uh, process then as per the bylaws what are the positions uh, sorry uh, as per the bylaws how many members you have defined to be executive committee uh, some places it is called as executive committee some bylaws they call the uh, people as management committee the internal president treasurer vice president secretary are called as office bearers Uh, so first when the executive uh, committee or management committee are elected by the residents uh, whoever gets the number of positions required for first 13 posts or first 17 posts or first 19 posts uh, they will be elected as management committee or executive committee then the management committee will internally elect the office bearers for president vice president secretary elect, uh, this thing so it is self regulated so there is no interference of any government authority or anybody recognizing this kind of uh, election process or nowhere it is defined under the act that elections has to be conducted in a particular way or particular fashion yes i hope this is clear but sir uh, yeah you are absolutely right but uh, uh, i visited some couple of the site we are mm. already i think i have downloaded that uh, uh, karnataka apartment on is 1972 mm. that completely the bylaws is there which we can uh, whoever residents want whoever apartment want to go that they can go and do the amendment and that uh, all the election process uh, when i was in the dlf madan high mm. there it is also the 1972 act and mm. already uh, it is a registrar visited there and uh, and uh, he in the presence of his uh, election was happen and all so maybe it's something that was happen almost like five years back if any rule change is there i am not aware about that see under 1972 act the question as uh, i will openly challenge that you will not get a certificate of registration and also your bylaws are not registered actually it is just a pages inserted under the dod before sub registrar and sub registrar is a revenue authority who does not have jurisdiction to register bylaws for maintenance of common areas his jurisdiction is only regarding land area extent stamp duty collection 
uh, all those land disputes all those mm-hmm. jurisdiction will fall under him but in my opinion sub registrar or revenue authority has exceeded his jurisdiction by uh, allowing insertion of bylaws into this deed of declaration document and this document is imposed on all residents to make you believe that you are a registered association in fact you are not because your identity as an association is established only by a certificate of registration which is not provided by any authority in karnataka so i am not so that because when i have been interacted with two three lawyer who is known to me as my friend is also there Hmm. they have said something different so now i am in a dilemma <laughs> <laughs> sir <laughs> sir i handle almost uh, now 12000 apartments every i uh, you can follow right. 1972 but uh, you have a limited legality perspective so but 1972 in tomorrow there are several pil i have also filed a pil to implement this act okay even my pil uh, right. a high court can give a direction to the state government but state government has a discretion but state government has come out with a clarification that uh, through registrar of cooperative societies uh, they want to impose they, they want to bringing the cooperative society sy- system like maharashtra i don't think so that state government will go and support go in support of 1972 act because they will not get sufficient revenue like uh, cooperative society system because government will put um, hands only, only when they will get the revenue in a right manner right uh, recognition manner then they will uh, try to sir, support the sir let, sir let me ask a blunt question sir we don't care about how government makes money sir we don't care about the revenue aspects of it we want to have an autonomous body that can enact their own bylaws that can conduct elections that is not contested by anybody uh, collect money spend money uh that cannot be regulated or questioned in the court of law what should we do sir okay. uh, i i i just want to add paspati one as he said right uh, actually we are looking for all these three points what paspati said and also what we are looking for is actually if there is any problem with the builder uh, we should have a strong act to fight with them in terms of our land transfer ownership transfer or any other pending works uh, uh, in the project so we want which act or which uh, uh, association can uh, have the more powers to fight with them yes sir so far your question is correct uh, regarding land transfer under 1972 you cannot get any land transferred in, in the name of the association only for the reason because you lack identity because you do not have an identity as an association uh, through certificate of registration or through a registered by law uh, so Uh, what is the handover taker of process followed in karnataka this is not there is no law defining how, uh, how to take handover uh, handover taker unlike maharashtra maharashtra is the only state which has defined hoto process so uh, generally the uh, the practice followed in karnataka is uh, the generally builder hands over all the original di- documents and he hands over the maintenance mm. Uh, to the association formed under 1972 uh, you 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 ask me a question whether uh, can you uh, ask the builder to register land in the name of association under 1972 not possible because of identity crisis that you are not an association second point in maharashtra uh, the apartment culture is quite old the apartment culture started in 1970s 1960s the buildings came for demolition in the year 2010 onwards in 2010 onwards there a big movement happened the movement uh, there was like uh, again the residents had to be at the mercy of builders for obtaining plan sanction plan approvals for reconstruction redevelopment in that scenario uh, the uh, when the uh, builders were reluctant to hand over the no objection certificates for reconstruction redevelopment for demolition of building and all so the state government came in support of cooperative societies who were registered uh, the state state government announced the scheme for deemed conveyance deed so in absence of the builder the cooperative society could get the land registered in their name for a nominal fee so uh, in karnataka the problem here is we have followed the maharashtra model bylaws 
uh, but we have not our state government have not announced the scheme for transfer of land in the lines of maharashtra for a nominal fee here yeah, can you, uh, you if you may ask me can we ask the builder to register the land in name of cooperative society yes you can ask uh, but only problem here is the our only way of recognizing transfer of land is by way of uh, collection of stamp duty so again you are paying double the time stamp duty on the land and uh, which will defeat the purpose even builder will not come forward to pay the stamp duty even residents will also not come forward to pay the stamp duty uh, to register the land in name of cooperative society so uh, but yes in future it may become a possibility our state government will amend the cooperative society system and uh, will allow the cooperative society to ask the builder to register the land in name of cooperative society for a nominal fees in the lines of maharashtra so uh, the state government has to come out with clarification for transfer of land in name of cooperative society till date not a single builder anywhere in karnataka has registered the land in name of 1972 association nor in the name of 1959 cooperative society it is uh, only the handover process they follow is uh, some uh, 95% of the people do not hand over original documents only 5 to 6% of builders hand over original land documents to the association the, the second part handover maintenance this is followed by the builders everybody hands over the maintenance part housekeeping agency or anything so uh, this is the only process followed in karnataka but it is not defined legally under the law like uh, yeah bipin sir if you can. yeah so how, how how so kindly suggest how that land transfer can happen to the association it is possible not possible not possible, possible until 1972 right not possible under 1972 1959 it's possible but against uh, the land or whatever is so in the that... yes tell me sir so you are saying 1959 it is possible yes uh, in 1959 it is possible by payment of stamp duty so entire land the payment of the stamp duty definitely builder will not pay hmm. yes so then so so, so many but the drawback is there in 1972 but hmm. still if you see that predominantly statistical data says that uh, so many apartments got registered under this so, uh, 1972 so yes maximum i also agree with your point maximum apartments since the year 2010 till 2021 have registered under 1972 1959 is a process uh, for maintenance of common area registration of cooperative society only started in the year 2020 june so we need to understand the timeline so 1959 started only in the year 2020 june onwards by the notification issued by registrar of cooperative societies uh, in uh, in the year 2020 we lost it in covid entire year uh, three four people registered in karnataka in the year 2021 almost some 20 to 25 people registered under as a cooperative society in the year 2020 to maximum people are moving to uh, either moving from 1972 to 1959 and uh, many newcomers are also moving what to is the drawback of the 1959 sir drawback people what i have uh, interact my interaction with uh, every week i keep conducting some uh, awareness sessions like this with several apartments so people don't like the reservation scheme and the five year term only for the reason because your apartment has a move in move out population you buy uh, if anybody who is not living here for continuous five years and he wants to sell it then uh, the vacancy may arise and uh, uh, but still you can co-opt under 1959 right. act but for first two and a half years they need to stay compulsorily otherwise if uh, within two and a half years if anybody uh, moves out uh, election has to be conducted again so first two and so half that that, years, that can be done in 1972 also in 1972 also we can 
सर डू नॉट कंपेर डिफरेंट स्टेट लॉस विथ कर्नाटक लॉस हियर वी फॉलो द वॉट एवर बै लॉस अवेलेबल फॉर रिजिस्ट्रेशन ओली सी अंडर को ऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी स्कीम इनिशियली इट स्टार्टेड फॉर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ बैंक so for banks there is a particular right. set of bylaws for uh, 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 formation of plots from agricultural land there is a particular set of bylaws for a milk dairy association there is a particular set of bylaws to be registered for different purpose different set of bylaws are only allowed to be registered right uh, here our purpose is right. internals of common area we have that maharashtra model bylaw only that bylaw will be allowed to be registered so in terms so in of uh, also we can have we can manage the common area right yes you can manage sir no problem i am giving you a choice i am giving yeah. you a choice it's right. your collective residents who can choose which act you want to be so i just wanted to paraphrase some of the questions that had come uh, uh, you know before the meeting uh, one of the concerns is uh, if there is a rogue uh, resident who is not paying maintenance uh, uh, we know and if you wanted to you know enact some actions against them or, or something like that uh, which law provides us the legal support for that uh, you know how can we uh, what is the process involved in both these acts under 1972 we go before civil courts so under under 1959 from the date of registration we approach the registrar of cooperative societies under the bylaws itself the registrar has powers to attach the assets of the maintenance defaulter to record the maintenance but under 1972 we go before civil court first we get an order then we get an execution order to attach his assets raise arrest warrants uh, uh, property attachment warrants and all so under 1972 to record maintenance is a long process but under uh, 1959 we directly file complaint before registrar for recovery of maintenance and under 1959 your jurisdiction is defined the all the land area on which the apartment is built that will be the jurisdiction for the cooperative society tomorrow some member you may ask me a question that some member will say that i do not want to be a member i will not be a member and i will not pay maintenance because i, I will uh, uh, here uh, it is straight forward because the maintenance of common area jurisdiction of the land survey numbers are defined in the act so nobody can escape the bylaws of the cooperative society because the bylaws will be imposed on him even though he is not subscribed to membership of the cooperative society because the jurisdiction for maintenance of common areas uh, lies with the registrar of cooperative society even with such non member we can recover the maintenance through him under 19 uh, under 1972 civil courts under 1959 registrar of cooperative societies thank you sir it's your internal discussion you can have your internal discussion with the all the residents you can share this video with them i will upload it on youtube so uh, everyone will have a better understanding it's your collective choice of residents which act you want to go thank you sir uh, another question sir uh, that had come is if there is a, a rogue office bearer who gets into you know financial mishandling and things like that or if there is any other uh, you know mismanagement uh, happens uh, again how is both the acts protecting us from uh, you know such uh, such acts see under 1972 uh, the question is uh, because here the competent authority itself has raised its hands stating i have no, no powers no role defined under this act i cannot do anything help you even if you go before city civil court the city uh, civil court will again ask the competent authority the, then competent authority will come and say i have not been given any powers i can't do anything under this act so it is in a very confusion state 
for inter uh, for misappropriation of funds unless you have proper proofs against that person for misappropriation of funds whether he has withdrawn from bank accounts it, uh, you can make an allegation allegation will be a different but misappropriation of funds will be different which has to be proved before court of law which is a very difficult process for somebody to prove it unless your uh, association body who are making decisions for expenditures are very strong and they are very open then such acts can be prevented but under uh, uh, 1959 act Uh, any member can go and file a complaint uh, it also works like a civil court process they'll had call for inquiry whether such a person has misappropriated as funds then he will be barred from participating in any elections and uh, his membership can be cancelled all such punishments can be imposed on him so whatever the amount misappropri he has misappropriated can be recovered and also uh, fines can be levied against him in the 1959 act okay uh abhilash dedi chandra here so yeah. i have a couple of questions <coughs> so regarding the title of the land right so which act uh, provides me the, uh, the the ownership of the title of the land and and uh, if we go with uh, 1972 act uh, is there a way with someone uh, down the line who can come and take the ownership of the land or claim the ownership of the land see in my opinion down the line in future when state governments work with 1950 because uh, we have to understand the fact that our apartment culture started in the only 2000s so the confusion will start in my opinion only when buildings age down and they come for demolition reconstruction redevelopment then the question arises whether such residents of the apartment have to approach the builder for obtaining noc for plan approval or uh, obtaining uh, plan permission for reconstruction redevelopment if owners are made to uh, go before the builder for all such provisions then mm -hmm. the problem, then a the movement may happen or the state government if they understand this problem before in hand they can go forward and make a provision and amend uh, insert another law to register the land area in name of cooperative society without collection of stamp duty so, so, so my my yeah. follow up question is let's say if i want to uh, construct traditional uh, let's say small utility building right uh, uh, within the premises let's say i want to construct a couple of toilets or a couple of uh, garbage shed uh, right uh, in the future right uh, will i be able to do that or do you want to get uh, approval from the builder to get that done <laughs> Yeah, under 1972, you need to get approval from the builder. Under 1959, cooperative society, yeah, you can approach the planning authority. Okay, okay. The That's other question is, right? Okay. Yeah. The, the other question is, uh, let's say down the line, if you want to do a reconstruction, hmm. let's say today if builder is available, tomorrow, let's say if he dissolves the company, is out of the business, what will be the approach? generally company dissolving is another issue legal hears will be there that's a situation based question mm -hmm. uh is legal hears can come in and uh, take in position of uh, to give plan approvals or anything but okay. because i don't see such a possibility in future because yes we are uh, no, i've seen couple of builders who are dissolved after a couple of years right uh, <laughs> So 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 let's say if that resident is uh, uh, is is with the AOA in 1972, what they will do in the future? Right? Is there a workaround available today, or you have to go with the discretion of the uh, the government? See, there is no workaround available so far now. Uh, but here, generally, uh, association they just given representation before. uh the planning authority uh, and uh, some planning authority may give some permission in the name of builder itself mm -hmm. uh, to allow such construction so it's just a understood process or builder has been uh, you bring in the builder to sign some documents and get some work done so this is how okay. the mm -hmm. process are being followed okay and, and the other follow up question right? there are a couple of misconception uh, today there are couple of lawyers who saying that uh, why are you worrying about the title of the land because uh, your uds is already defined in the sale deed right yes. so so uh, how do we go with that argument see uds is defined i agree uh, sometimes builder does not give proportionate uds 
okay uh, your suppose your uh, general 7 acres land is there he will only give uds with the land on which the apartment is constructed but he will not give uds for the clubhouse and all those other things some areas this uh, issue has cropped up wherein the clubhouse and all the amenities still lies in the name of builder Mm -hmm. So, uh, these questions can also be challenged before court of law because when he promised me to sell the apartment, he, he sold me with clubhouse amenities and all. But mm -hmm. that's a long drawn question uh, to be contested before uh, uh, courts and courts have to answer it. I have not come across anybody uh, mm -hmm. challenging the UDS scheme, uh, UDS uh, inappropriate UDS scheme. Uh, okay. And uh, one more thing is, if you open, uh, if you apply for land records, you still find the name of the builder in the land records. Okay, okay. Even if you go with the conveyance deed, but the but the land record will still no, stay. No, no, no. The builder name. See, conveyance deed uh, only when you register. Yes, it's a possibility. A cooperative society will get the name of uh, will get the land in their name. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, automatically but once he constructs and he gets over he uh, generally the land will still be in the name of uh, builder but in your apartment uh, in your apartment sale deed he would have given you as some uh, uds on the apartment you have purchased okay okay hmm. so does that guarantee that uh, you know, uh, my name will be uh, on the records of the land uh, in the future, sir, in any of these laws. Just by having it on the CLD, will it solve the question of land ownership? At any time, your land will not be in dispute because of your, by virtue of your source document that is sale deed. In sale deed, UDS will be available. Mm -hmm. But only the question here comes in in, in uh, terms of reconstruction, redevelopment, because our law is not clear or nor our state government has made it clear because we have not uh, gotten down to that situation where we are required to demolish buildings due to old age or some safety hazard. So when those kinds of situation arise in our society, then our state governments may make some laws in future. Till that time, uh, till the time the uh, building ages down for demolition, you are safe. The building uh, and land are in your custody. But when you have to go for plan approvals and sign, that is the uh, question. When uh, we have to approach builder or can we approach as an association or can we approach as a cooperative society for plan sanction, uh, plan approvals. That is a question to be answered by our state government. I also cannot answer. No advocate can also answer that question. Because our uh, state, we have not come to a situation where our uh, apartments have to be raised down and reconstructed due to old age. Our apartments are very new. Hardly half of the age might be over. Uh, so in next 20 to 25 years, we will face that situation. Yes, Mr. Sanjay. Yeah. Okay, just a couple of questions. Um, so, what what we understand is that 1972, you are saying, is not an authorized. There is no authorized body, whereas 1959 has an authorized body for the registration process and everything. Um, what is the basic need of the authorized body? Now, as an apartment, all we're trying to do is collect maintenance, mm -hmm. maintain the property and ensure that, uh, you know, people pay up on time and the apartment looks the way it is and maybe get all the amenities that are available and maintain them properly. So when are the needs of reaching out to this competent authority arising? Mm -hmm. um, because 1959 also, although has a lot of provisions to go to the authority, like you said, it is extremely complex. Now, in India, finding the reaching out every time to the sub registrar with changes that can happen, like you said, every two years people can leave uh, because it's an apartment. Uh, so, five years tenure, OCBC, SPSC, all of this, it is not easy uh, to, to up, agree and abide to all of these rules. And on top of that, a five year tenure. So, it is not an easy law. Uh, it is not today very clearly designed for apartments. Uh, it is basically retrofitted to serve apartment because Karnataka is not able to figure out what has to be done. Um, also, very clearly, uh, 
you know, there are the only intent very clearly looks like is to make money out of apartments, which they have already made enough. So, so do we really need that authority? And what are the reasons I would need to reach out to that authority? See, it's a question I, you as collective resident should answer this question. Whether you want to be subject under 1972, you can. You want to be subject to 1959 uh, cooperative society. You, I leave it at the majority decision of your resident. No, no, that was not the question. That was not the question at all. The question is, why do I need to sign up against an authority? Right? Sign? So, huh. so you said against a regulation. So mm -hmm. you said that sub registrar of cooperative societies is not authorized to register a society under 1972. He is only or they are only authorized to submit register under 1959, right? So I'm my question is going back to that. Why do I need to go and register under a body itself when there are thousands and hundreds and thousands of apartments in Karnataka who believe in courts that they have registered and they're functioning like chalk and cheese? Why this sudden urge to have a legal authority or have a body to stamp it and give you a certificate. Just want to clarify that because uh, the other law is extremely complex and has so many issues that I can't even change bylaws. Now, every apartment, every society is different. Every uh, uh, environment is very different. I can't follow something that is followed in Maharashtra in, in Bangalore. And I can't follow something which is followed in X apartment in Y apartment also because the layouts are very different. The, the demography of the apartment could be very different. Uh, I don't want the body to run it for five years because five years is big enough time to do so much hotala. And our legal system, although you might want to say that you can challenge somebody in the with the sub register, it will take me 100 years to prove that he has actually done wrong. Mm. So it is basically a waste of time going to the law for these kind of things. I really want to understand why do I need somebody like that when the legal system itself is kaput? <laughs> Sir, everybody has to fight for his right. Fair enough. If you, if you want to challenge your right, you need to fight for it. If you are silent, then you need to be silent. This is a straightforward answer. So it still doesn't answer the question, Avlash, as to why do I need to go to the legal authority? As an apartment, all we are intending to do hmm. is run the show properly, hmm. manage the society properly, Provide the required amenities. Wait, tomorrow, so what happened to everybody? Wait, let me just yeah, this, right? let me answer. So, sure, today, okay. today, today, you decide to follow 1972. Tomorrow, High Court recognizes the fact that there is no registration procedure under the said Act. There is only filing procedure available, but still, that filing procedure is not accepted by the competent authority. The builder is making a fool of residents by sending it through registered post with acknowledgement RPAD and he shows you that acknowledgement uh, and he makes you believe that you are a registered association. In fact, you are not a registered association. If this procedure now is being questioned before high court and high courts have raised, uh, have asked the state government to file objections and state government in the next one or two months, they are coming to file their objections. If their objections are accepted, uh, the state government who have in the legal department who have given clarification that there is no provision for registration of apartment association under 1972 and 1960. If they accept their uh, objection, uh, if they accept their writings of legal department, uh, the high court accepts, then all 1972 associations running so far will go out for a toss. Everybody will have to move, move out to 1959. And so the procedure, the procedure followed for registration, the procedure followed for 1972 is not backed by state government, is not backed by any law, is not ba backed by any act. So the very question itself is like, why do you even have to have a law? That should have to, have to run an apartment. That is the question, sir. Why do you even have to? Why do I have to follow a law? That is even a question. No, no, no. That is no, no, the Pashwati, fundamental no, no, no. question. Pashwati, the question is not why do I have to follow a law. Yeah. That is not the question. You have to follow a law. I'm saying under a specific registered authority, when the gov when the Karnataka government itself is being challenged, and the, and the follow up question of last to your comment now that 
the Karnataka government wants to force fit people to move to 1959. But we have, and you have also been in this profession and we would have registered associations under 1972 or are working with apartments. Won't the authorities take a call that why, why force people to change? Why not make the required modification <laughs> in 1972 and provide relevant certificates to the authority? Again, I'm not being biased to either of the laws. I'm just trying to understand why go through so many challenges of K K the Societies Act because it's complex. Let's be honest about it. It is not. It is not as simple as it as you have made it sound. See, I am just placing the truth before you. It is your choice to accept the truth or to follow with whatever uh, has been followed so far in the name of the Associ uh, 1972 association. It is your choice of collective choice of your residents. Yes, tomorrow high court may give a direction, but that direction is a discretionary power of the state government whether to follow such direction by uh, or not by the state government. The state government can also refuse to follow that direction so two possibilities with almost some 25 to 30 PILs are pending before High Court. Uh, few people have asked to quash this entire 1972 Act. Few people uh, I have asked to implement this 1972 Act because no powers, jurisdiction or duties have been defined with the competent authority. The procedure followed is just an eye wash in this 1972 to, uh, to be... Uh, because the question is before the high court. Tomorrow, yes, you may ask me what is the possibility. Two possibilities may come. One is the state go uh, high court may ask the state government to quash the entire act as a direction. It is discretionary power of the state government to quash that act. Second possibility, they may ask to implement this act by defining proper powers, roles, and duties to the registrar. It's a choice exercised by the state government what kind of direction the high court issues whether it wants to exercise that direction or whether it wants to go only with cooperative society it's a choice to be exercised by state government neither you nor nor anybody we can just debate and discuss on it but it Understood. has to be directly from the okay. top sure one more one more comment and this is more uh, you because you brought up this point that uh, as a builder they register under the KOA Act by sending the documents by post and they show us the acknowledgement. Now, the, the, our apartment is very different in that case because the builder has not even done this. So they've done nothing as of now. So they, when we asked them the question, have you registered the DOD? They said, no, we have not. So in our case, it is completely something that we as residents are going to do. Does it make any difference? Your residents cannot register DOD. First of all, okay. because uh, 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 because uh, the landowner has to come, the builder has to come, and many and uh, the, the, there there is one notification uh, passed recently by sub registrar asking not to register bylaws of the association. I'm not sure. I have not got. I just got a word of mouth that bylaws inserted in the DOD should not be allowed to be registered. So this notification has been passed uh, by the uh, IGR department to all sub-registrars. So it's uh, so if that notification, if I, I have not got that uh, notification, and uh, so 1972 associations are generally registered by the builder plus landowner or they will have to give a general power of attorney to any third party, then they will register that uh, deed of declaration and bylaws. So in our case, what you are saying is because they have not done it, <clears throat> one, uh, like at a high level, it cannot be done, or they have to give a GPA or come to the Correct. authority Correct. and physically sign. Correct. So then, then the whole issue of they eye washing by sending by post is gone because they will physically come along with some of us and get it done. Or is that still an issue? Sir, they will physically come or they will uh, eye washing will happen irrespective of uh, whatever uh, you, you want to believe. See, mm -hmm. uh, generally after registration, the insertion uh, because our sub registrars are not are not having jurisdiction jurisdiction to register the bylaws for common area maintenance here 
he is uh, sometimes he is full to uh, make you believe that uh, he can register some people uh, make full of sub registrar uh, by inserting those documents he collects just the additional uh, per page uh, scanning fees to re uh, register that document and uh, some registrars i don't want to say uh they, they allow such registration by taking some exorbitant amount also so uh, because uh this practice has been followed by many registrars around in and around bangalore Got it. understand now so, what is the what is the mandatory need to register the bylaws tomorrow any resident can uh, question you you do not have a registered bylaws i will not follow this bylaws and yes he can uh, go before court of law and we can uh, prove his point okay yes because you so there is to, tomorrow no law the, as such yes. there is no law as such but in case somebody challenges then it becomes an issue absolutely okay. because 1960 uh, in the past uh, year almost eight uh, resident welfare association so far in uh, bangalore their registration has been cancelled under 1960 and i am handling two uh, two clients uh, in one of the tivoli apartments welfare association they were registered under 1960 the the few residents went to high court got an order for cancellation of registration certificate high court gave an order to collect maintenance till they form under 1972 but now builder is not coming forward to register under 1972 we want to move to 1959 we have filed a writ appeal against that order yes. so our order is uh, uh, we have filed of the rti repli uh, replies issued by uh, the authorities so if our replies are accepted by the high court in a double judge bench it may create a wide spread of awareness that 1972 associations are not having a thought if court recognizes the rti replies issued by the competent authority if court recognizes the replies issued by the competent authority under the act and the court comes of the decision that 1972 uh, people cannot register then it may create a widespread awareness with all uh, 1972 associations and it's a future to be decided next week we may have a hearing so i'm waiting for that hearing okay last one from my end what are the challenges that you because you have registered some societies under uh, the new 1959 what are the issues that they are facing i believe the on the process very clearly extremely cumbersome uh, expensive and takes time but after that what are the issues that you are seeing that they are facing sir as of now i uh, because most of the apartment cooperative societies have registered only in the year 2021 so 2020 entire so still, year, still a year. let me let still me more complete. than a year gone right let me complete we are just in a nascent stage to tell what are the difficulties faced by the cooperative society because many cooperative societies have just run for a year uh, in a year they need to conduct uh, three four uh, annual general body meetings uh, here the uh, when you conduct general body meetings you need to write down all the resolutions and keep under 1972 associations people never used to write down all the resolutions passed in general bo body meeting they used to always keep it on save it on mail or any, uh, anything like that but under 1959 compulsorily uh, Uh, you have to write down all the resolutions and a secretary generally the practice followed is secretary should be an outsider uh, who will be signing all the minutes of resolutions and all other things generally we appoint a state manager to become the secretary but without voting rights so we generally appoint a state manager uh, as secretary under the 1959 act so uh, we have to uh, keep proper bookkeeping every year we need to renew the cooperative society by submitting audit reports by submitting all the copies of the resolution uh, so these are the challenges under 1972 there is no renewal process 
it is uh, self regulated and mm -hmm. people uh, do not keep proper bookkeeping under 1972 act they just circulate through emails and uh, many sometimes many uh, misappropriation of funds go unnoticed if office bearers mm -hmm. are hand in glue with all the housekeeping agencies well, many issues are there but I understand uh, only how are they how are they how are they coming to this point of reservations uh, because that's that in today's <clears throat> world, like personally as a, as an individual, I think that's very wrong mm. uh, to do the whole reservation thing, and especially in societies in cities like us. So how are they some circumventing this? Because we might not have any of those in our apartment. See, if people of such as as per the rule, <clears throat> it is a rule made by state government. Neither you, neither me, I cannot go and change the rule unless state government passes a notification for uh, removing reservations. But uh, as as the rule says that if uh, such people of category are not available, then those pl places have to be kept vacant. Out of 13, then you'll have to run the show with only <coughs> nine, uh, nine people. What is the cost for that yearly uh, renewal process? 0.1 or 0.2% of the entire year's expenditure, we need to pay and renew the Cooperative Society Certificate. Uh, you mentioned while answering about the uh, rights, right? Uh, you did mention that, you know, it's your right and you have to fight for it. Uh, just a very naive question. What is the right we are losing uh, by, either, by either of these acts? I'm not even aware of what my right is. See, your basic purpose is maintain common area, give housekeeping services to all residents. If your basic services are not provident, your apartment is not fit uh, for worthy living. Uh, because when you run the association, uh, 100 fingers are pointed at you or they are. Uh, so it is uh, generally we need to show proper audit reports and people who are contesting for all the they should be uh, in a very skilled persons to answer the questions raised by. Uh, other people when somebody has a question that uh, how you have uh, done expenditure of all the amounts uh, collected as maintenance we should have proper uh, reasoning and whatever if he's the, not getting satisfactory explanation or with proper documented proofs are not available for such expenditures then he can raise a complaint or a question before the registrar that yes the, there is a possibility misappropriation of funds might have happened please come and uh, exercise uh, my, my right to know the correct audited reports of expenditures done by the management committee so but in koa act it is scots free right it's, it's a scot free act right sir i mean no yes. i can file a civil court and i can sit on the civil court and the office bearers can continue to do whatever they want to do absolutely if, that situation arises. Absolutely. That is a call that the majority of us have to take, whether we need to have a society of that kind or a society that can have some Absolutely. checks and balances. See, okay. I, Next. Thank my, you. My, my role is to educate you on how these both acts are working because I'm legal advisor for both the kinds of uh, cooperative societies. Also, I'm legal advisor for 1972 types of associations. Also, I'm legal advisor. I'm just keeping the truth before you. It's a choice which kind of truth you want to fit in your uh, working, daily working for maintaining the common areas. It's your, you want to accept. I leave it open to you. Yeah. I will ask follow-up question to, to yeah. somebody that Pashupati gave that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's up to us to decide which law we want to follow. Mm. Now, under 72, I have to file a civil case against the association if they're not managing the society properly or whatever, right? Mm. Under 1959, I do the same thing with the sub registrar. No, no, no. You do it with the registrar of cooperative okay. Sub registrar. registrar. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Fair yeah. So, with the registrar, Mm. What happens after that? Does he come with a gun and say, Boss, paisa do nahi I'll do something else? Or what happens? No, what will, is the uh, and what is the time taken? See, he and will how is it different you. from civil case? He will call you for inquiry. Okay. He'll call you for inquiry, the, the executive committee, management committee. We'll have to come out with proper proofs that no such incident has happened. 
so the complainant has to prove his case the hmm. management committee has to prove their case with right. fact so instead of going to the court i do the same thing in front of the registrar absolutely that's the only difference because yes. the time yes. taken can, can still be time taken right yes under civil court uh, just to serve a notice they will give three months time Ha, and, then uh, uh, and then your evidence, the cross examination, ah, other side evidence, cross examination. So here there is no question of cross examination. Here only you uh, produce your facts, oh. prove. I see three types of disputes: interpretation of bylaws. I am interpreting bylaw in one way. You are interpreting bylaw in your own way. If I and you have a dispute, I go before registrar. Registrar gives the correct version of interpretation of the bylaw. One thing, okay. so there there can be no uh, dispute with uh, regard to interpretation of bylaw because registrar is the final authority. But before civil court, you and me have a different. I go to civil court. Civil court again asking competent authority. Competent authority will raise his hands. I do not have. Then again, mm. civil court will come back and reply. This is the correct definition of bylaw. It's a, again a uh, unknown uh, area where we are going into. And second, thing, misappropriation of uh, funds. Uh, before uh, civil court, again, it's uh, again it's the same issue as like interpretation of bylaws. Misappro so misappropriation of bylaws before registrar. You uh, such complainant go goes with proper proofs. He has withdrawn money from the account and he has used it for his own purpose. If he has proper proofs, he can go file. And uh, sub election disputes, I don't. Under 1972, there can be election disputes. Some sometimes office capturing may happen, booth capturing may happen. But under nine, uh, 1959, if there is some threat of such uh, elections, the you can uh, registrar during election process can bring the police people and conduct the election. He has such powers. He's a government official. He can bring in, bring in police people and conduct the elections. If there, is, if he finds that it's a sensitive uh, zone to con conduct elections. So, so, so like what you are saying, sorry, one comment last one, Anand, sorry, is that whatever you said are the negatives on the 1972 are from our learnings in the last 20 years because. Since 2020, apartments in Karnataka have been registered under that. And this is our learning that these are the negatives that can happen, right? But because this is so new, we don't even know what it's an unknown. It's like fighting against an unknown devil, whereas fighting against a known devil. Hmm. At least on the negatives. I know the legality of it. I'm not challenging that. That is absolutely fair what you're saying. But the challenges can be actually insanely big uh, because we don't even know what challenges are going to face. Just wanted to share that comment. Please go ahead, Alan. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, Abhilash, based on your perspective and based on your experiences, whatever you have shared. So, if I just come to a list of it, so you are saying that along, if if you just think from KCSA 1959 perspective, we are having proper law law in the place, which is also backed by our state government. But yeah. when we are talking about KOA 1972, it's completely an autonomous body within the society, who frame the laws, who run their show. But if there is any problem, there is no one to back that particular uh, you know, uh, association. And that, that will end up with multiple civil cases, which is very difficult to hold from a personal individual perspective also and from an association perspective. Please uh, let me know if my understanding is correct. Absolutely correct. OK. <coughs> OK. Thanks for clarifying that. So I hope everybody is now in a proper position to understand both acts. Thanks. Appreciate the time and the feedback and the patience to answer some of the stupid questions that at least I have asked. No, no. You asked the correct questions. Those are the general questions asked. Every week I conduct seminars, uh, visiting apartments. Now I have uh, started doing only online because I can share some documents to every resident this way. Uh, I, I just had one last question, Avilash, because I just read this couple of pieces somewhere also. Like uh, in KCSA, obviously the processes are pretty complex. Mm. The bylaws are something that is uh, not uh, modifiable once that is placed. But I have heard this also that Obviously, uh, bylaws are something uh, specifically in KCSA, 
that that is that has been framed and people are supposed to you know uh, abide to that particular bylaws but based on the nature of apartment based on the nature of design of it if there are some internal resolutions that that can actually help the residents of that particular society to just cope up with certain situations is that doable or is, that is also not doable thumb rule of uh, following bylaws under 1959 is if you are passing a resolution which is giving benefit to all residents follow it if you are passing a resolution which is curtailing rights of few in violation of the bylaws then it's a no go okay so, so you are saying that even 70 or 80% majority are in you know uh, inside of that particular internal resolution but mm -hmm. even 10 20% is not uh, you know inside of that it is still a no go for us right see i will not generally define like that see okay. it depends upon area to area suppose uh, you want to decide how much maintenance per square feet should be collected mm -hmm. in the first general body meeting you present the facts and figures of all the housekeeping agency uh, courts before residents and uh, these are the expenditures required to be collected and these are the amount as required to be maintained as contingency fund in case of any emergency you define and you uh, and uh, you call for voting in the gbm so so whether to uh, to fix uh, uh, per square feet so much price to be collected from each individual resident that can be done easily mm -hmm. that's not a challenge so you call for uh, voting 51% majority vote for the prices you uh, mc body decide you pass that resolution and collect and uh, suppose you want to exceed your expenditures in a particular uh, uh, auditing year and then you again have to call for a general body meeting uh, for any emergency or any contingency which is a requirement and necessity which is giving benefit to all residents yes you can so once you start with a good start in the first annual uh, first uh, general body meeting whatever resolutions and uh, the fines has to be divided if somebody is defaulting on maintenance how much fine should be levied on him for per day for uh, paying payment of maintenance what are the rules pet rules are there uh, different different uh, uh, rules for uh, tenants you have to form a rules so all those things has to be addressed in first general body meeting pass a resolution those resolutions are outside the scope of our bylaws so those uh, uh, resolutions has to be brought in uh, to have a peaceful safe working of the entire association so those resolutions are have to be incorporated in the first general body meeting and okay. should be followed so so just just a follow up question on top of that avilash so the, the point is that that you are mentioning so in order to run the society in a proper welfare manner if we are saying that uh, th this type of at, at least a certain majority people if they are backing this particular dissolution it cannot be challenged or it is still be challenged see dissolution is very difficult two third members have to come okay okay two third members will never come forward on a particular general body meeting you call you call all two third members you come no apartment uh, i handle 4500 apartments in one rwa uh, uh, you call for a general body meeting only uh, uh, 10% even not even people 10% not even people come 250 to 300 people come yeah. okay. so we just uh, we just uh, pass in all the simple resolutions we cannot even amend the bylaws but one uh, thing we do is if any rules we new rules we want to bring in which is not uh, curtailing right of uh, any resident as an addendum to the bylaw we pass it down but any right which is curtailing the right of any member which is against the in, which is in violation of the bylaw then it's a no go okay makes sense makes sense thanks so uh, dipin here so one query maybe you might have already given the answer so wanted to understand that in 1959 comes under the which uh, uh, authority and the 72 comes under which authority both can uh, come under the same authority registrar of cooperative societies okay but 1972 registrar of cooperative societies registrar himself has said 
no powers conferred upon me to register associations under 1972 no power conferred upon me to accept filing of dod and bylaws so builder takes a back route sends it to post because in the tapal section every day that uh, uh, in the register of cooperatives he will accept any post coming to him he just puts a seal and sign on the acknowledgement that acknowledgement is forwarded back to the builder builder will show you that acknowledgement my dear friends see i have filed it before the competent authority this is how he makes a fool out of the procedure mentioned in the act that i have filed and when it is mentioning filing the proper number for filing should be given proper entry of records uh, register how many apartment associations are registered under 1972 no such bookkeeping is done by the registrar of cooperative societies okay so it means that he in terms of any dispute end of the day it's a registrar right Uh, in terms of yeah under 1972 i'm speaking like the uh, the project you said or, that in 1972 and 1959 both comes under the authority of the registrar correct. so in this case any dispute will happen hmm. whether it is in 1972 or 1959 end of the authority is that uh, registrar to hear the our dispute right uh correct but registrar will not hear under 1972 he will ask you to go to civil court right so 1972 then uh, it's a civil court and 1959 is a registrar right correct correct and ablesh can you confirm uh, i think you said right i think uh, uh, some registrar of uh, they, they got a uh, notification that they should not be uh, attesting the uh, the bylaws uh, in the dod mm, so can you double check on that yeah i have just heard by word of mouth but i am not uh, unless i receive a notification to share with people uh, it will be clear on open so so you can also just visit your sub registrar and ask whether any such notification is available uh, questioning uh, not not to register bylaws of the common area maintenance inserted with the dod but your but your point of view on uh, that the registrar has already been in or oh, sorry registrar has responded to your rti that they have been uh, registrar of cooperative societies not the sub uh, yeah yeah so registrar of cooperative societies responded to the rti that they have not been given enough rights to register the dod and bylaws and all of that right that's, that's something that is a documented response that you have the how here how do you get the name as an association first of all in the deed of declaration itself the builder uh, names you as an association the question arises whether the sub registrar who is a revenue authority can he register you as an association if he registers you as an association why is he not giving you certificate of registration correct so the builder is in fact is only registering the deed of declaration in his name to declare the common area the land the apartments the uds given to each individual apartments that is the only scope of this document deed of declaration but builder does an uh, another mischief by inserting bylaws of the common area maintenance into this document it makes you believe that you are a registered association when the sub registrar puts his seal and sign on this document uh, it is obvious oh you, you look at this document oh it is having seal and sign of the registrar uh, so uh, yes it should be a legit document in fact when he is not having powers to register bylaws of common area maintenance how he is uh, done so is a uh, have been uh, challenged before high court state government in next month they may come out with a clarification yes that uh, 1972 there is no provision to register associations if high court gives a verdict against 1972 associations all 1972 associations maybe some uh, four uh, some 10000 uh, 1972 associations are there in uh, bangalore itself all may go for a toss So, sir so maybe you have given the answer but uh, again uh, same uh, very small query it means that registrar is separate and cooperative registrar is separate right correct correct so i i, I use the term sub registrar 
in uh, have used i have called him as sub registrar he is a revenue authority so Correct. registrar of cooperative okay, society is a different entity so okay, the so 1950 to 1959 will come under the cooperative society sub registrar and the 1972 will come under the registrar right? no 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 1959 will come under registrar of cooperative society 1972 will right. come under a sub registrar who is a revenue authority who registers your apartment also the builder registers the apartment okay. in your through the same sub registrar this i am talking about the sub registrar so, revenue authority okay, so like the sale deed and all the thing what you have correct deed. yes absolutely your sale deed and all your uh, deeds where you register that sub registrar i am speaking about yeah one minute so just okay. want to be mindful of your time as well uh you gave us one hour and it's about 30 minutes over i just wanted to check if you have we'll some more time because we have a lot of questions coming okay. in just wanted to check yeah please please hello hello yes so in case of uh, the dispute under the owners association act who will be the authority to resolve that issue who will be the authority to resolve that issue yeah, you it depends upon how, uh, what kind of issue you are addressing if a management committee wants to address that issue and resolve you can or if somebody a member who is not ma- from the management committee wants to go and question the resolution or anything passed by the uh, management committee or executive committee he can exercise that right the civil court will come uh, has to uh, resolve the dispute no no not the uh, sub register sub registrar his jurisdiction is only with regard to stamp duty collection land area <laughs> okay if you go and complain to before sub registrar he will only say see baba i have registered only deed of declaration Uh, to, right, there right, is right. dispute in deed of declaration document you come before me okay. there is dispute for okay. maintenance collection i do not have jurisdiction do not come before me okay okay understand say one say one example is that under the owners association act if i become the president and secretary and if they are not conducting the election in the due time hmm. so what the action will be taken by which authority so such a grieved party will have to approach civil court and uh, uh, civil court has to come out with a decision okay and in case of the society i mean the uh, welfare society in case of cooperative society they will have to approach registrar of cooperative societies with, they uh, are the authority to resolve the issues yes yes for see three things only three things you will face uh interpretation of bylaws misappropriation of funds and uh, election disputes for these three areas registrar of cooperative society will be the final authority okay that's good nice nice yes pashupati sir yes, tell me yeah uh, so earlier you had mentioned that in cooperative society acts uh, you know the audit reports have to be submitted annually right sir uh, so Correct. will that records become publicly available through rta or some other measures or is it uh, what are the confidentiality of all those uh, records sir you have to for, for the members okay for the members of cooperative society in the office you have to keep copies of resolution audit report available uh, for uh, viewing of the members okay so, so that's a rule you need to transparency is very strictly followed under 1959 act 1972 act transparency is generally not followed by members in uh, many place because they will only share the online documents of uh, resolutions passed or uh, online documents of audit report of expenditures but under 1959 strictly a copy of all these things has to be made available for all the members and even for the registrar if he visits uh, for any inspection okay no. thank you
<laughs> and just a uh, paraphrasing what you said earlier sir you said uh, nine, though the axe is 1959 it came into existence in 2020 so is it fair enough to understand that's the most recent act absolutely that's the only act which gives certificate of registration as cooperative society it is the only act which registers the bylaws for cooperative society for common area maintenance maintenance yes so okay. one one question this act has been formed by the government of karnataka isn't it absolutely yeah so the for any variation or any i mean the omission of the act there the karnataka government is the authority to resolve or amend whatever the issue will come see generally the minister of state of Co- cooperation there is one uh, department Uh, right, right. ministry is responsible for all amendments uh, depending upon any debates and discussions happening in state parliament and those debates and discuss- output of those debates and discussions being implemented in this act it has to come from a top chain link authority for any amendments or recommendations but in the meantime oh, okay. uh, the administrative officers have certain relaxation to make better working of the act they can also amend few provisions or omit few provisions they also have some liberty to do so some again, changes so once this act has been formed and uh, by the uh, uh, karnataka government so any dispute under this act it will go to the civil court no before register of cooperative societies okay. under uh, 1959 no i am talking of the 72 uh, 72 you will have to go to civil court no in between the authority is there no because if you go to any authority that authority should have powers defined under that correct right. so sub registrar who is uh, uh, illegally registering your bylaws he has not given uh, mm. not given any authority to register bylaws if if you go before him question by the law he will say i have not been given powers and if you go before registrar of cooperative society uh, he will also refuse that no powers no duties no jurisdiction has been defined to me under 1972 act Percent. So, so if I can read is, between the lines, right, uh, so so are we saying that the uh, the KOA nineteen seventy two act has been purposefully uh, implemented with flaws? <laughs> right, see, if I understood right. See, let's understand the historical aspect. Was there uh, the practice of uh, following nineteen seventy two? We can trace it back to earliest two thousand eight or two thousand ten. only since 2008 or 2010 many builders started uh, following the flaws of 1972 there was no government notification or any government uh, document with support yeah. and tells that you can register association under 1972 act the builder just picked out flaws under 1972 act and made residents believe that you are an association i hope okay. you understand. okay got it hmm. but it is something that the government of maharashtra has uh, formed this the act and nobody is the authority it provided uh, as a government of maharashtra to resolve the any issues it is directly the civil court so this is for civil court anybody can go for any the reason see but the the act under this act there must be some authority uh, uh, authorized by the government of karnataka who can resolve all this issue under 1959 act for three issues you can 72 go, uh, 72 uh, yeah. our state government has not come out with any clarification and uh, before which authority that, you can put up that's what i so people are going to That's civil court to yes people are going to civil courts and abhilash do you have any copy of the bylaws for uh, 
KCSA Act 1959. That can yes. be. I will share the translated version. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just one other uh, uh, piece of information. It's very specific and. Uh, uh, sir, I would suggest not to put this in YouTube uh, when you're uh, putting this. Uh, mm -hmm. This is very sensitive, specific to our uh, community as such. We do have a, a case, the case that is pending against the title of the land. Mm -hmm. um, so with that background in place, uh, we wanted to have a, 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 a body that can, uh, you know, get notified about the proceedings of the case. And all. apart from the maintenance, we also make sure that like, the case is uh you know whenever the uh, the word is pronounced in the court um you know we get to know and uh, you know the rights of the land also get transferred to us so in that sense like which should be the uh what is your recommendation in terms of the act under which we should form an association yeah. see my 1972 to question the land titles and all yes court are recognizing you in our association till the time uh, the future is bleak or not so sure for 1972 associations. But in my opinion, if you form a cooperative society, that would be better. So that tomorrow, if law changes, and uh, my opinion is uh, 100, uh, 95 to 100%, our state government will vouch only for cooperative society scheme of maintenance of common areas. And uh, you have to question uh, under, see, for common area, to, uh, if you want to question for the common areas, you can uh, question through the cooperative society. But if your individual rights or some apartment rights, uh, some amenities has not been provided to you as an individual, you can also approach individually. So uh, depending upon what type of uh, claim and benefits. Uh, if you may ask me, can cooperative society go on behalf of a resident and file cases on behalf of the resident? No, it cannot file. The cooperative society can go and file only in question of common areas. So the jurisdiction and ambit only lies with the common areas. For individual problems, for individual uh, uh, problems of individual residents, such resident will have to approach he himself uh, in, 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 in his individual capacity for any uh, uh, deficient of service. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. In construction quality for such kind or delay construction and all. Such individual have to go. Our so jurisdiction uh, as a cooperative society or as an association, only we can question before courts with respect to common areas. Got it, sir. And under so, KOA, like... until uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Under KOA, is it the same, sir? Is it uh, how is it different, sir? Under the seventy two Act. Yeah, you can. People have filed against builder before RERA, before civil courts, questioning uh, uh, any land disputes, and uh, builder not providing sufficient information about common areas, and some places common areas he has showed on map one type of uh, one type of land and but in practice uh, common areas have been uh, uh, sold to some other person some issues have come up in the past and associations are representing such cases pertaining to common areas so avilash one last question in the continuation of the same question which was shared by chandra and pashupati so specifically on the uh, uh, you know uh, is specifically on the title of the land. So it filed on our behalf. You can file, but depends upon the nature and circumstances. Uh, and uh, your right as a legal owner should be proved before court. Ah. So provided that injunction or stay can be obtained. But uh, it's again uh, based on the proofs you submit before the court. And uh, Got it. it's a long time. It's a long process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank thanks, Avilash, thanks. for your time. Thank I you. will upload. I will upload. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.